When you think about file on apparatus, there are four things that are very important when you discuss the symptoms. Those are fever, chills, flank pain, and uh, colony farming units more than 100,000 on urine culture. So whenever you see fever, chills, flank pain, and more than 100,000 CFUs on urine culture in a patient, that is, you can almost sure that it is pyelonephritis. Now you see, pyelonephritis, how can you define it? It is the infection of kidney parenchyma. It has been estimated that uh, more than 100,000 hospitalizations happen per year in the United States. Now, how can the infection reach the kidneys? It can be in many ways, but usually it results from upward spread from cystitis or it can also result from hematogenous seeding of the kidney from another infectious source uh, that, that resides in the body. Now you see the complications of pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis can be complicated by infectious stones or renal scarring if left untreated. I mean, if a recurrent pyelonephritis happens in a patient, ultimately you will find renal scarring uh, in that patient, but in most of the cases, cases in young patients, if you treat it well, I mean, you won't find any complications. Now, the most common bacteria involved in pyelonephritis are same as for uncomplicated cystitis. The most of the most common are Escherichia coli and Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Klebsiella species and uh, occasionally enterobacter species. So as with uh, simple cystitis, some women with genetic predispositions are more commonly affected than other women and uh, patients with renal anatomic abnormalities. They are also more prone to get pyelonephritis than other patients. Now let us discuss the clinical findings. As I mentioned earlier, the clinical findings, the symptoms include fever, chills and malaise dysuria, the flank pain, and uh, even nausea and vomiting. And the laboratory findings include a dipstick that is positive for leukocytesterase or nitrates and a urine culture with more than 100,000 CFUs. Imaging studies are generally not needed, but in patients with uh, diabetes or with uh, stones, you where you can expect complications and especially in the patients with the diabetes where emphysematous pyelonephritis is very common and very dangerous you should always do an imaging study such as CT scan and the test of choice in pyelonephritis is CT scan now let us think about uh, the differential diagnosis you see, the differential diagnosis is very important in terms of uh, both its uh, both your treatment and uh, also preventing the morbidity, morbidity and uh, mortality, and to reduce the mortality rates. Now, you can think in in these lines. If the patient has negative urine dipstick or culture, think of uh, pelvic inflammatory disease or a stone obstructing the ureter or a lower lobe pneumonia which might also present like uh, pyelonephritis or herpes joster. It can also resemble pyelonephritis. And if the patient has guarding or rebound, think about acute cholecystitis and acute appendicitis or even perforated viscous. If there is recurrent infections, always think about kidney stones. And also, if, if the patient is getting recurrent infections, common sense says, you might you may not be treating it is adequately or uh, even the organism is resistant or even there is an anatomical abnormality in kidney or even uh, there is a spontaneous or infection related uh, process is going on and if the patient is diabetes this is very very important point if the patient has diabetes and has pyelonephritis you should always think about emphysematous pyelonephritis because you see 85 to 90 percent of cases with of uh, emphysematous pyelonephritis they are diabetics and it is a deadly condition and uh, which mean many times 
need aggressive antibiotic treatment and also nephrectomy in many cases where the microorganisms become resistant and uh, are devastating the patient. So whenever the patient has diabetes, you should always think about emphysematous pyelonephritis. And if the patient has a history of childhood infections or urological surgery, you should always think of anatomical abnormalities. If there is a history of kidney stones, you can also think, you should think about pyelonephritis complicated by kidney stones. Now let us uh, talk about uh, complications as I mentioned earlier. Diabetics can experience emphysematous pyelonephritis. This is diagnosed by an X-ray or uh, another imaging study uh, like a CT scan where you see gas in the renal collecting system and around the kidney. In a diabetic patient, the treatment of choice is emergency nephrectomy. I said earlier that uh, emergency nephrectomy is uh, uh, is is the treatment of choice and uh, the mortality rate in diabetics it approaches 75 percent and uh, so emergency nephrectomy is needed in diabetics stones can complicate pyelonephritis by causing a partial or complete obstruction these stones can be spontaneous or infection stones of strovite caused by urea splitting organisms stones complicating pyelonephritis must be removed before the infection will completely resolve and also the childhood pyelonephritis whenever the patient comes with a childhood pyelonephritis with a history of uh, recurrent childhood pyelonephritis you can uh, uh, suspect renal scarring and recurrent infections. These scars are unusual in healthy adults with pyelonephritis. Young men with pyelonephritis should be investigated for a cause and uh, patients who do not respond to 48 hours of appropriate antibiotics should be worked up for occult complicating factors and other diagnosis. So that's about complications. Now let us talk about treatment of pyelonephritis. In the outpatient setting, the first line outpatient treatment is usually a fluoroquinolone. The best drugs for treatment of pyelonephritis are bactericidal with a broad spectrum to cover both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria that concentrate well in urine and renal tissues, aminoglycosides, amino penicillins such as amoxicillin with or without clavulinic acid, Tecarcillin, Pipercillin, Cephalosporins, Fluoroquinolins, or even in extreme cases, Imipenem are all appropriate. But um, uh, uh, there are no recent studies about uh, cure rates, but uh, cure rates have been reported to approach 90% with uh, 10 day to 2 week course of antibiotics. Now coming to prognosis, prognosis for after an acute and complicated pyelonephritis in a previously healthy adult is excellent, but in uh, conditions like where uh, renal abnormalities or uh, when the patient has uh, diabetes or when the patient has a history of recurrent infections in other organs of the body or when the patient has COPD with uh, resistant microorganisms hosted in his lungs or when the patient has uh, kidney stones for a long time with uh, recurrent infections, then prognosis will be complicated by uh, pyelonephritis not going off the body. So that's about pyelonephritis. See you tomorrow.